Hey, love getting those golf swings. Keep them coming to me. Send them to a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. Make sure, by the way, when you hold the camera, you hold it in the horizontal fashion and send me anything, whatever, driver, short game, putter, full swing, whatever. I want to see all of it, okay? Just send it along to me. And if you have it in the right way, better chance that you're going to get on one of our shows here. All right, it's time for a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. And we're going over here to look at a golf swing. And this is from Antoine. And Antoine's done a beautiful job. Honestly, Antoine, beautiful job in the address position. I love it. And there are things that I, that I like to see. I like to see the angle of the back just like that. I like to see the rear outside of the heels. That's a fabulous balanced position. And then finally, race those, the arm position hanging down. It's hanging out just a little bit but it's, it's comfortable. And this is what I love to see. I love seeing comfortable address positions. So that's brilliant. Now, let's watch what happens with this motion. And what you're gonna see is, it's a little clumsy in the backswing. And the backswing flaw creates some other things that, that we don't wanna see in, in, in the motion. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When this club starts to go back, the club really kind of swings horizontally for right here. The arms and everything are moving way, way, way too far inside. So the club face right there is in a, what we would call a, a shut position. And what we want to see, I don't want necessarily want to see the toe. I don't want to see the toe above the heel like that, but I don't want to see it look like that either. I want it sort of in between. It should pretty much marry up to what you're doing with your, your trail palm and as you go back, I don't want that trail palm to be pointed to the ground. I also don't want it to be pointing right across, okay? So what happens in this position is now you're thrown out of balance. So that beautiful address position that you have, what you've done is you've chucked some weight out onto the toe or, or out onto your toes. And what you'll see is when you start to go in here, it starts to drop down. You see the head right here is going to kind of drop down into the face of that bunker, right there because the lead shoulder is so low and the lead shoulder is low because you haven't opened up that club face enough to get the the lead arm to climb the chest so we really don't have the arm climbing the chest the way we want the 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 arm to work and so what happens is you have what we call an around and up swing and there's no up in the in the back swing there at the start of the back swing all right so now you start to lift it up but when you lift it up now the club face is in a what we'll call a wide open position. So you go from shut to open and your, your lead wrist has a, has a little cup right here. And that creates a bit of a problem. Because if I have an open club face, I now have to swing dramatically across to the left, which is exactly what Antoine does here. So good athletes will make good compensations. This is a, a compensation that's actually going in the wrong direction. And what I mean by that is, is that here's a good athlete trying to figure out how to make a, an open club face work, right? So he's pulling across it to try to offset that open club face. And by the way, it worked because we're in the fairway. So we know we're in the fairway. The, the driver must have worked. But then this shot comes. He says, I need to send this along and see what happened. Well, this is what happened. The, the, the head of the golf club now at this point is almost directly above the golf ball. And it is never supposed to be there, never supposed to be there, and particularly not at this point in the downswing. And now we get into this and you're coming down on top of it, so now all the energy is coming downward, which is why we're gonna take an enormous divot and this ball is gonna start out right into this tree. You're not gonna see it, but that's what happened. And so there's this big divot coming. Here's the golf ball right here, by the way. This big divot is coming. He's running into his body, so it looks like his arms and hands are very, very close to him. And that's why this lead elbow is now starting to bend right here, even though the club hasn't lifted up at all. Here's the club head right here, and here's his elbow already bending, which is his body basically saying, I got to do something to get this club out of the ground. Otherwise, it's going to keep going down. Okay, so now that happens. Now he's lifting up with the body, and then there's a flip. And what will happen here is this, and I will tell you, um, everybody, you've seen this individual. They have the bubble on their forearm, and that bubble on the forearm is there because they have so much impact going into the ground that all that energy is reverberating back up to the arm, and it's creating a problem. 
golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care, but you're wearing the bubble. And the bubble is an indication that you got going on what Antoine has got going on. Now, I want to go back to this other thing as we deliver this golf club down into the ground. You see where the shaft of the golf club is right here? That shaft of the golf club is going through this, this lead forearm or lead arm. What we want to have happen is when this club is working down in the downswing, we want it to go through the trail forearm. So the shaft of the golf club should be over here and it's over here. And the reason why it's over there is because it's gone around and up and now it's coming back down and over with the open club face. And so the backswing is creating all the rest of the, the challenges in this downswing, Antoine. And what I can tell you is, is that there's great body movement here. It's just, you're trying to hit a golf ball from a poor position. So let's fix this problem, all right? So we come over here and we go into a down the line view. What's happening in the down the line view is the club is, take, is, is taking this horizontal movement in here like this. And then it's lifting up. And when it's lifting up, the club face is getting open. And now we're rerouting over the top and driving this thing down into the ground like that and then trying to get it out and doing that number there. And that's exactly the position that he looks like he's in. So I want to address the backswing first. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little swim noodle, put this swim noodle right here like this, okay? And what we want to do is we want to feel like we're going to take the club back and let it just stay outside the swim noodle and go up. Just like that, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We'll take this club back, let it go out here like this, and then swing. You won't have to worry about hitting the swim noodle in the downswing because you're already out and over the top there. So we don't need to worry about that part in the downswing. You can actually hit balls from here early on. You set that, that swim noodle in there about a club head inside your path, and all you're gonna do is just feel you take it outside here like this. And the reason why, again, why I like to use the swim noodle is because if you hit it, you're not going to hurt yourself, okay? So an excellent drill to start with. Once you have where you, you have it so that you're comfortable with what you're doing, then what I want you to do is this. I want you to take the swim noodle. I want you to put it on the strike line and then turn it onto about a, not quite a 45 degree angle, but somewhere in that neighborhood. So we're going to put the ball up into here. What you can see is, is that that swim noodle is now back behind there by about a foot. And in that foot, I should be able to take this club back and not hit the swim noodle, okay? So we take it back. The club goes over the swim noodle just like that. So I go like this. And now when I get up here, I want to get the feeling of in the down the line view that the club is going to come into the ball along the line of the swim noodle, just like this, okay? So it's going to feel like when we make our swing, like we're making a big loop. This is what it's going to feel like. It's going to feel like out and under and, and then through. And the reason why it's going to feel like is you're going, you're doing a loop the other way. You're taking the club back in here, lift it up, and then go over. So your swing is going like this, and I want you to go like this, okay? So set up here in this fashion. Feel that club going out over there, and then loop it underneath and miss that swim noodle. And what you're going to get when you do that is you're going to, you won't take as big a divot, but now all of a sudden you're going to get a draw. That ball had about 800 RPMs of left spin to it. So that ball is going to start out and it's going to draw, which is going to be great for you. Okay. Let's try another one of these just so you understand. About a foot inside that swim noodle is where you're going to position the ball. We set up to this, let it come back out over that and then loop underneath. It starts out, has a nice little left spin to it, starts to track the flag. Beautiful shot there. After you've done that for a while, now you can take all this stuff out of here. And again, this is going to take you a little bit of time, Antoine. You're probably going to take, in order for you to do this, you're probably a couple months out, to be honest with you, depending on how much time you get to practice. Okay? All right. So now I'm feeling this club going out here like this. And then we're going to loop this in, try to generate a little bit more club head speed. Let's see if we can get one to that flag. Okay, so this is a good one. Let's see what we got. 
almost hit it over the green there. That one there went about 160 yards with the eight iron. So do that, and what you're going to find is, is that you're going to have control over what's happening with the club as it comes into that golf ball. You won't be taking those big divots. You won't need to wear that bubble on your arm, and you'll be able to play a lot more golf. Okay, that's a grip tip presented by Golf Prize.